What's up, Classic WoW fans? Today we're going to be discussing the potions and consumables that are most useful in PvP. Consumables in vanilla provide you with a way to play around the shortcomings of your class and can make it easier to deal with tactics or mechanics that counter you. Some consumables are must-haves in general, but others pair extraordinarily well with specific classes. We'll go over all the consumable items that are most commonly useful in PvP and talk about the situational benefits of each one. There are three important things to note before we get started here. The first is that nearly all of the consumables discussed in this video are off the global cooldown, meaning you can seamlessly weave them into your playstyle and easily combine them with class abilities and engineering items. It's also important to know that almost all potions in the game share a two-minute cooldown. This means that choosing the right potion for each situation is crucial. And the final thing to note here is that many of the consumables we will discuss can be dispelled by priests, shamans, or the Fellhunter Warlock pet. The most commonly used potion in PvP is probably the basic health potion. This gives you an instant cast heal off the global cooldown and can guarantee you the win in a close 1v1 or help you survive when your healer is CC'd. It's worth carrying health potions in case you end up in a situation where you really need one, but in most situations this is probably the worst way to use your potion cooldown, especially when you're playing in a group. There are other ways you can regenerate health such as bandages, furbolg medicine pouch, and whipper root tubers. So it's usually better to use your potion cooldown on something that lets you play your class differently and lets you manipulate the mechanics of the game. Certain potions are complete game changers. The first game changing potion we'll talk about is the free action potion, commonly referred to as FAP. This item makes you completely immune to stun and movement impairing effects for a full 30 seconds. It's easy to see how powerful this potion is. Warriors and rogues can use it to be able to stick to their targets and avoid being kited, and ranged classes can use it to avoid stuns and slows. The only way way to counter a fapped player without dispelling the potion is to chain CC them with abilities such as Rocket Helm, Polymorph, Fear, Blind, Sap, or a Hunter Trap, and wait for the duration of the potion to finish. Gouge works as well because the game engine classifies it as an incapacitate, not a stun. Combining Fap with Skull of Impending Doom makes you virtually unstoppable for 10 seconds because the Skull will break most of the abilities that can CC you through a Fap. If you're unfamiliar with Skull of Impending Doom, you should definitely look back through my old videos and check out the one that covers Skull. It's important to note that Fap doesn't remove stuns or slows that are already active on you. It just makes you immune to future ones. If you pop a Fap with a hamstring already on you, you'll remain stuck in the hamstring until the initial debuff expires. The next potion we'll discuss is the Limited Invulnerability Potion, which is incredible for casters. It makes you immune to all physical attacks for 6 seconds. This includes physical stuns and ranged damage from hunters, and prevents any physical abilities from giving you cast pushback. This is the perfect potion to use when you want to dive into a crowd of melee and spam AoE as a mage, when you have a melee sitting on you as a healer, or when you need to avoid an incoming burst of damage from a warrior, rogue, or hunter. Invulnerability Potions function almost exactly like the Paladin ability blessing of protection, they just have a shorter duration. It's important to note that popping an invuln pot while carrying the flag in Warsong Gulch will cause you to drop it, so this one is not a good choice for flag carriers. Next up is the Restorative Potion. Resto Pots remove a magic, curse, poison, or disease effect on you every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. This potion is amazing for healers to avoid getting stuck in CC such as Polymorph and Fear. It even works on Rocket Helm, which is classified as a magic debuff. Resto Pots can also be useful for rogues because it removes Fairy Fire, one of the most crippling abilities for a rogue to deal with. Resto Pots remove Hunter's Mark as well. The main limitations of this potion are the fact that it only ticks every 5 seconds and you can't control which debuff it removes if you have more than one on you. It's still a very strong option for healers and is situationally useful for rogues. Living Action Potion is another insanely powerful potion in PvP, but it won't be available until Zolgarub is released in Phase 4. The recipe that alchemists need to craft this potion requires exalted reputation with the Zandalar tribe before you can purchase it from the vendor in STV. Living Action Potions make you immune to stun and movement impairing effects for 5 seconds. At first glance, this just seems like a shorter duration FAP, but the catch is that unlike FAPs, Living Action Pots also remove existing stuns and slows. This means 
when a rogue gets you in a five-point kidney shot, you can pop a living action potion to break out of his stun and completely turn the fight around. Living action potions are a game changer for just about every class. They are particularly strong on classes that don't have any other way to escape stuns, such as warlocks and rogues, whose PvP trinkets don't remove stuns. Living action potions can also break you out of roots or snares when you're in a pinch, and the subsequent five seconds of slow and stun immunity gives you time to escape, create distance, or close in on your target if you're being kited. This potion is also incredibly strong for Warsong Gulch flag carriers because it does not cause you to drop the flag. Finally, there is the Swiftness Potion. This one is pretty straightforward. It increases your movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. Swiftness Potions are significantly less expensive than the other pots we've talked about so far, so you tend to see them used in PvP quite a lot. Keep in mind that Swiftness Pots share a cooldown with all the others we have discussed so far. So if you use one, you won't be able to use another potion for two minutes. If you need to move fast in combat and your rocket boots are on cooldown, swiftness potions are very useful. Just be careful popping it around a priest or shaman. Just like all the potions we have covered so far, swiftness pots can be dispelled. Now let's touch on a couple useful consumes that aren't classified as potions. The next two items we will talk about do not share the global 2-minute potion cooldown. Elixir of Poison Resistance is a very sneaky item for removing Viper Sting and Crippling Poison from yourself. This item has a very short cooldown, so it can basically be spammed. Viper Sting, a hunter ability that drains mana, is incredibly annoying to deal with for casters, so poison elixirs can make your life a lot easier in battlegrounds. And crippling poison is the main thing rogues rely on to stick to their targets and avoid being kited, so being able to remove it with an elixir will let you slip away and create distance. Powerful Anti-Venom is another very sneaky consumable that is highly underused. This one shares a cooldown with your basic first aid bandages. The main strength of Anti-Venoms is that because they are classified as a first aid item rather than a potion, you're able to use them on other players. Blind is classified as a poison in vanilla, so you can actually use Anti-Venoms to break your teammates out of blinds, which is insanely strong. Oh. Blinded, blinded, blinded. I got you blind, I got you I'm scattered. You can't use an anti-venom on yourself while you are blinded, but if your teammates are carrying this consumable, they can pop you right out of a blind. This can be extremely clutch, and most high-level pre-maids in 2019 expect you to be ready to de-blind your teammates. Finally, I have to mention a few particular engineering consumables. Grenades are insanely strong and only have a 1 minute cooldown. They provide you with a 3 second stun that can give you time to cast a CC spell or set up your burst damage. If you want to be a tryhard, you should basically be spamming grenades on cooldown. Most players tend to use iron grenades over thorium grenades because they are much cheaper to craft and the stun duration is exactly the same. Iron grenades do a bit less damage than their thorium counterparts, but you're not using grenades for the damage, you're using them for the stun. So stick with iron unless you're rich enough to not care. The way aiming grenades works can be a bit tricky to figure out at first, and it's kind of unintuitive. So check out one of my older videos for a detailed breakdown on how the mechanics of grenades work. Goblin Sapper Charges are another really strong engineering consumable. Sappers do instant cast AoE damage in a large radius around the player. They are off the global cooldown, but they share a 1 minute cooldown with your grenades. Sappers are great for supplementing your AoE damage during an aggressive dive, and can also be used by classes that lack AoE to pop rogues out of stealth. Finally, I want to touch on Flash Bombs. These are a highly situational, niche item, but they are incredibly useful for dealing with druid flag carriers in Warsong Gulch. Flash Bombs fear beasts within a 5 yard radius for 10 seconds, and the key here is that they work on druids that are in bear, cat, or travel form. Druid flag carriers are notoriously difficult to CC, but a well-placed flash bomb can stop them in their tracks and give your team time to collapse on them, even if they have FAP and Skull active. There are loads more consumables out there, but these are the main ones that you'll find consistently useful in PvP. Part of the beauty of vanilla is that there are so many quirky little gadgets, consumables, and other types of items that you can add to your playstyle in PvP. So don't hesitate to explore the more niche or lesser used consumables that are in the game. Just know that most of the stuff not covered in this video is highly situational and only really useful in very specific scenarios. The idea of using consumables in PvP might kind of feel like cheating to players that are more familiar with modern retail WoW. 
but I can assure you that the top players on your server in Classic will always have consumables ready to use when they really need to. Whether you're PvPing out in the world or fighting in a battleground, the players who dedicate time to farming consumables will always have a leg up. I also think it's worth noting that many of the potions we discussed today are slightly more powerful on the Horde side, because Paladins cannot dispel them. Remember, only Shamans, Priests, and Warlock Fell Hunters can dispel potions. And last but not least, it's typically frowned upon to use potions in duels. It's just kind of a bad manners type of thing. You can do it if you want, but expect people to be a little bit salty. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned some new stuff. If you found the video helpful and informative, subscribe for more Classic Wall content just like this. Hop in my Discord if you have any questions, and be sure to hit me with a follow on Twitch because that's where I'm going to be once the game goes live in just a few more days. I've also recently created a Patreon page so that you guys who are really enjoying my stuff can help keep the lights on, and help keep this little guy fed while I chase the Rank 14 dream. See you guys next time.